But beginning in 1 Kings 19, verse 1, and we'll read through verse 8, like I said. The Bible says this, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die. And he said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And he lay and slept under a juniper tree, and behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. The angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and arise, said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and 40 nights under Oreb, the mount of God. I want to focus on that verse 7 here, where the angel comes the second time into Elijah and tells him to arise and eat. And the phrase that they use after that is this, the journey is too great for thee. Let me say this morning, I couldn't imagine living life without Jesus. I have grown up in church my whole life, uh, obviously with my dad being a pastor, and so I have been involved in church. But I can tell you, I look at other people and how they struggle to go through life, and I can't imagine facing some things that people face without having Jesus. I can't imagine facing the loss of our loved ones without having the comfort that Jesus gives and without having the knowledge that if they are a Christian as well, that I'll see them again. I couldn't imagine facing health problems and financial problems and, and spiritual problems without Jesus in my life. But I believe this morning that we sometimes live our lives like we don't need Jesus or perhaps even like he's not there. That's where Elijah finds himself today. If we read right before this in chapter 18, Elijah accomplishes an amazing uh, work of God and he is, he is uh, serving him and uh, he is able to uh, slay all of these prophets, these false prophets of Baal and he's able to show that the power of God and the, and the, the realness of God and who the real true God is and the power that God has given him to proclaim his word and as a prophet. And Elijah is on this spiritual high of all he's accomplished for the work of Christ. And then we get to chapter 19. And here he is. In verse 4 he says. Man I just want to die. He says it's enough now God. He says I give up. I throw in the towel. I'm calling it quits. I, I, I can't take it anymore. And he lays down under a tree. And he says I'm just going to lay here. Until I die. And we can get to that place sometimes in life and spiritually, physically, mentally, where we want to just give up on what it is that we're facing. We may have accomplished victory in this area. We may have accomplished success before, but sometimes the burden of the situation that we are facing becomes too heavy for us to bear. I'm reminded of Psalms 121 verse 2 where it says, My help cometh from the Lord which, make, which makes heaven and earth. And Elijah is reminded quickly that even he, with all of his great successes, was not able to face life on his own. The journey was too great for him. Can I say this morning that the journey of life today is too great for you and I without Jesus? Amen. 
I want us to notice just a few things this morning from this passage. Three, just three points and a few sub points and we'll be on our way. But number one, I want us to see this this morning. The journey is always greater than the journeyer. The journey is always greater than the journeyer. And I, I, I say that this morning to, to say this, that we can accomplish some things in our own power. But the Bible reminds us that uh, all things are possible, what? Not through us. All things are not possible through our hard work or through our mental uh, uh, capacity or if we just will it into existence or speak it into existence. But what? All things are possible through Christ Jesus. There will be times of victory in our life. But can I tell you this morning that when there is victory, it is usually followed by defeat or failure. That's the situation Elijah is in. He has ex experienced great success and victory and wins. And can I tell you this morning that when we have success and when we have victory, that is the moment and the time in which Satan seeks to attack us the greatest because he knows it will be the greatest fall in our life. When there's victory, it is usually followed by defeat. Can I say this morning that in between the mountaintops, of our spiritual highs, there's valleys of spiritual depression. This is where Elijah is. But listen, when you have a mountain, it is only geographically and uh, logical that in between every mountain is a valley. And as Elijah climbs this mountain of conquering these false prophets, as he comes down, he begins to realize that, man... Maybe I'm not strong enough to continue. But I think we see a couple things in the valley of, of despair here this morning that gives us hope. Number one, I believe that there's strength to be found in the valley. Look uh, with me, if you would, in verse 6. The Bible says, And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. Can I, I believe this morning, number one, there's strength to be found in the valley because I believe there's water in the valley. God always provides for us exactly what we need. Not just water, but there's food. Twice God sends an angel with food and water to Elijah to sustain him. Can I tell you this morning that no matter where you are in your life today... God does not ignore you or leave you lacking for what you need. We may not always get what we want. We talked about this morning in Sunday school class. We may not always get all that we want, but we always have all that we need for life. God gives us the strength that we need even at our weakest moments to succeed and to, to be able to come through. I think about the old story about the, you know, we all, many of you perhaps know the poem of the footprints in the sand and the, the picture. And, and uh, uh, you know, I heard one preacher say one time, he said, I imagine that somebody, sometimes people get to heaven and they look back and they see only one set of footprints in the sand. And they ask God, why did you forsake me in those times? And God says to them, I didn't forsake you, I carried you. God delivers strength in the valley but I think also this morning, it's important for us to remember that not only is there a valley, but there's only one way out of the valley. Our path won't get us through. Listen, Elijah had a couple options here. To stay in the valley, to die under that tree, to try to go about it his own way of getting out, or to follow God and in his strength. Climb back up the mountain again. I think that many times we get so stuck about trying to do things our own way that we get stuck wandering around in the valley for our whole life. Never experiencing success, never experiencing the power of God because we're stuck in the journey without the help of God to get where we're supposed to go. 
But not only, number one, is the journey always greater than the journey, or number two, that when forsaken in the journey by others, God remains. I imagine everybody was with Elijah when he conquered all of those false prophets. Oh, Elijah, you're such a great man of God. Oh, Elijah, you're such a great prophet. Oh, Elijah, you, you're so, you've done so many good things. And Elijah, why don't you come help us? There is always friendship and support found in victory, but not a lot found in our moments of despair. Psalms 27.10 tells us that when my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. I will tell you this this morning, that no one loves you or ever will love you like Jesus does today. Have you ever felt lonely? Have you ever felt like nobody was with you? That nobody cared? That nobody supported you? But can I tell you this morning, the Bible tells us that Jesus is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That he is someone who will never leave us and never forsake us. That he is always with us. And I believe this morning that in as we go through life, Jesus is always with us as a believer. His help never leaves us. His comfort never forsakes takes us and his hope never leaves us hopeless but lastly this morning this is where i really wanted to get to not only is the journey always greater than the journey here and that when forsaken in the journey god's help always remains but i believe this morning that whatever our problems are in life jesus is the solution i believe that that no matter what our situation may be, that Jesus can solve it. Can I say this morning, I believe it, that if you're lost here this morning, he's the Savior for your life. The Bible tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and that every person must be saved to enter into the kingdom of heaven. If you're lost here this morning, if you are in your sin and, and, and you have never been forgiven of that sin, only Jesus Christ can forgive you of that sin and be the Savior of your life. His death, His blood, and His resurrection can forgive you of all those things. Can I tell you this morning that if your life stinks... If your life is sad and, and lonely and depressed, can I tell you he's wonderful? Turn to Isaiah chapter 9 with me. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, if you read it with me. As Isaiah the prophet is prophesying about the future, Jesus Christ, about his future coming. And uh, some uh, thousand years before he even comes upon the scene. And he says this, describing Jesus and he says in verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called, listen to this, Wonderful. I don't know about you this morning, but I believe that Jesus is wonderful. Amen. Wonderful in the experiences that I have seen take place in my life. Wonderful in the saving grace that he has been given to me and bestowed upon my life. Wonderful in the blessings that he has given to me. And the, the possessions and, and the uh, relationships that he's put into my life. He's wonderful in the depression that he's helped me get through. He's wonderful in the health scares that he's delivered me from. He's wonderful in all of the things that he's given to me. He's wonderful for allowing me to stand here this morning with breath in my lungs. To preach this message. To be in this church with you people. Can I say that not only if your life stinks. Is he wonderful. If you're confused this morning. He's the mighty counselor. Look at the very next word in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. It says his name shall be called wonderful counselor. We, we uh, sometimes need to talk to somebody about stuff. And uh, my, I tell you what, my biggest help is to be able, uh, about once a week, I get together with my brothers and we just sit and we just talk about everything. And I, I have a close relationship with them and, and we can uh, talk about our problems and the, uh, what's bothering us and um, help and, and what would you do. And it's a great help because sometimes we have a tendency and maybe it's just me, but we have a tendency sometimes as Americans to just bottle everything up. I tell everybody that I'm Irish, Scottish, and Mexican. So the fact that I reveal any type of emotion is a miracle in itself. 
But he's our mighty counselor. When we have a problem, we can take it to him. And he gives us the advice and the answers we need. Well, I can try to give you help. I can try to give you advice. I can try to counsel you. And I can do my best. But at the end of the day, the, the best that I can do is point you to Jesus Christ. Oh, if you're confused this morning, he's your mighty counselor. Let me say this. If your heart is troubled, he's the prince of peace. Notice the very last description given there in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says he's wonderful. He's counselor. And he's the mighty God and the everlasting father. And he's those things. And we'll, we'll just glance over them for sake of time this morning. But lastly, it says he's the prince of peace. If you go through life without Jesus Christ, you'll go through a life full of troubles, trials, and tempest storms. It's not that Jesus removes the storm from your life this morning. But it's that he calms your life in the storm. I think the greatest example of this is Peter when he walks on the water. Jesus doesn't calm the storm for Peter to walk on the water. He simply tells Peter to come forth and begin to walk. And Peter walks towards him in the water. But what happens when Peter begins to look around at the storm, he begins to sink. And we remember the story about how the disciples went out to sea and the storm arises and they are going to sink and Jesus is sleeping at the bottom of the ship. And they said, Jesus, you care not that we're about to die. And Jesus comes up and what does he do? He says, peace be still. And the storm ceases. Jesus Christ this morning brings peace to my life and to your life if we we'll allow him to bring peace to our troubled hearts. We've got to silence all the noise in our life and silence all of the problems in our life and say, God, give me peace about it. It doesn't mean that the problem goes away, but it means that God sometimes just gives you peace about the situation that you're in and about the answer and the solution to the problem. But if your heart's troubled, he's the Prince of Peace. Can I say, if you're sick this morning, he's the great physician. Matthew 9, 12 tells us that it says, When Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. In John chapter 3, he tells us that he comes not to seek and save that which is uh, saved or righteous, right? But that which was lost. I believe that spiritually, this is a, a twofold point this morning. I believe spiritually God came to seek and save that which was sick with a disease called sin. And he's here to deliver us and free us and cure us from that d disease and that bondage and that penalty of sin. But can I, believe, I believe this morning that through the power of prayer that Jesus Christ can heal people. Now if a man tries to tell you that he can heal somebody... I'd run as far and as fast as I can away from them, okay? I can't heal anybody. But I sure believe God can. I'm reminded of Mark chapter 5 as Jesus is walking through the crowd and there's a woman with an issue of blood. Twelve years, the Bible tells us, she's suffered with the same disease, been to every doctor she can find, and cannot find any help, cannot find a cure, and she touches the hem of Jesus' garment, and she's healed. Well, I can't explain miracles. If I could explain them, they wouldn't really be a miracle, would they? But Jesus Christ is the great physician. There is hope to be found in our sickness with Jesus. And let me say this this morning. It's not in my notes. But I'll just add this. I remember one time my dad saying this. He says. We pray for our, our loved ones when they're sick. When they're, when they're dealing with issues. And he said sometimes they die. And we say God you didn't answer my prayer. And he said. My, my dad used to always say. Sometimes God's healing of their sickness. Is not that he takes the sickness away. But he takes the pain away. And brings them to heaven. I believe in a divine healer named Jesus. But not only that, I believe if you're sorrowful this morning, I believe he is our comforter. Oh, there are some times in our life where we experience sorrow. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3-4, through 4, it tells us, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our 
tribulation. Jesus is the great comforter. I said at the beginning of this message, I don't know how people experience some things in life without Jesus Christ. I'm glad that when I experienced the loss of a loved one, and, and uh, we just had a, my aunt pass away a couple weeks ago, and my mom sighed, and I, I'm glad to know that I one day see her again. It doesn't mean that there's not a sorrow for that loss. But I am comforted in knowing that that loss is not eternal. If you don't know where you're going this morning, he is the great shepherd. Psalms 23, 1 tells us the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But sometimes we find ourselves under a tree ready to give up. Spiritually. Physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever it may be this morning. But when we're in that situation, I believe that God comes as a great shepherd to guide us out of that problem. It doesn't mean, listen this morning, it doesn't mean that God is going to always get us through because it takes action on our part. Elijah could have said, I don't want the food. I don't want the water. I'm just going to lay back down here and die. I told you what I wanted, God. I give up. But because he took that drink and he took that meat, the, the Bible tells us, look at verse 8 again in chapter 19, if you're still there. If not, just listen. It says, and he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights. Can I tell you that when God gives us our uh, gives us necessities and when God guides us, it'll last far longer than anything you or I could come up with. He's the chief shepherd this morning and wherever you are in your life, wherever, whatever situation you find yourself in, whatever place you find yourself in at this point in your life, know that God can guide you to where you want to be, where you want to go. And where he wants you to get to. But lastly this morning I believe this. If you don't know your eternity. He's the way the truth. And the life. John chapter 4 verse 6 tells us that. And he says uh, to them. and He says Jesus said to them. I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the father. But by me. Don't die without Jesus, because listen to this morning. If you die without Jesus, you die with nothing. We mentioned it in Sunday school. You see, you can't, you can't take a U-Haul with you, and you can't take a Brinks truck with you. But there's one thing you can take with you when you die, and that's Jesus. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints in Psalms 116 and verse 15. In 1 Corinthians 15, though, it says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, can I tell you this morning, you'll never get out of the valley and be able to climb the mountain without first having Jesus in your life. But if you have Jesus and you find yourself not able to finish the journey, look to Jesus. Paul said at the end of his life, he said, I've run my race, I've finished my course. I imagine there's times during his Race of life in which he thought about giving up. Can I tell you, there's times I thought about giving up too. I've shared with you before and, and some of you, before I came here, I thoroughly and heavily considered giving up on the ministry. Had a failed experience and had to, uh, uh, some things happen in the previous place I was at. Can I tell you, I had gotten to a point where I was so discouraged, I thought, what's the point? But I'm sure glad today as I stand here that I didn't give up. And it's, let me say this, that I didn't give up not because I had strength, because I had none. 
I didn't not give up and I'm not here today because I'm special or because I am, uh, you know, unique, but because I simply said, God, I know this is what you've called me to do. Help me to do it. The journey is too great for you and I. And if we try to figure it out on our own, we will fail every time. But when we trust Christ and when we walk in his strength, when we're in the word of God and we're walking with the living water of Jesus Christ, we can go a lot more than 40 days and 40 nights. We can go our whole life in the strength of God.